Uh, whenever you guys are ready, can you describe what we have here? Yep. So this is our uh, system for generating an anaglyph 3D image in real time. Uh, here we have a stereo camera set up with two uh, uh, FPV NTSC cameras, which were used because they were easy to interface with the chip. Uh, this is on a 3D printed bracket running through a video, uh, a video uh, called a multiplexer. The, uh, each of these run into these two channels. This sets it up with a quad, a quad view. We then read it in and decode it through a single channel. Okay. Um, on the screen here, we're outputting to the VGA. Um, they're very small because of the limited resolution of the cameras. Uh, this image here is a true anaglyph 3D image uh, created from the stereo cameras. And this is a depth map created from the, uh, the stereo data. Oh, cool. And the depth map works a lot better when you have a solid background. Okay. So we'll give a, a proper demonstration. Yeah, well. sure. So, so can you describe how you, how are you making the anaglyph 3D image here? Um, so basically we have a video splitter which um, takes in the input from these two cameras and then outputs it sort of in a grid. And so then when we decode the image, we sort of just read them in parallel and then do some processing and then we output the correct pixel value to the VGA again. This camera is a, we use a bit mask to uh, turn this camera into just one red or blue. Um, yeah, I don't know. One yeah. of them is filtered where we only yeah. take the red color blue, value. Blue is to the left one. and red is to the right. Um, yeah. So each camera has one of the channels which lines up to one of the lenses on your glasses. Yeah. So that in a single flat image, you get the sense of two slightly offset images just like your eyes are. Um, so this allows your brain to input this, this information yeah. from a single source and create the illusion of depth as if you were looking at it with your two eyes. So just to be clear, I'll show the camera. It's for these kinds of uh, mm -hmm. old school 3D glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we also worked on a depth map. So um, ideally, uh, if we had even more time to work on this project, you could take a depth map that we've made and then apply that to our image and say, identify what's closest to the image and farthest away and create even larger offsets. But for here, this is just sort of a um, demonstration of how that depth map might work. So the idea is we can take the two images that we uh, are reading in through our uh, video multiplexer and we can sort of uh, compare on each row. What we can do is we can sort of look at n pixels at a time. And on one image, we look at a group of n. And on the second image, we have sort of a sliding window that looks at groups of pixels at a time. It compares out how similar the colors are in order to find what's most similar. How do you do the similarity thing? Uh, we did a simple uh, Euclidean distance in the 8-bit color space. Yep. And then we have a bunch of uh, uh, parameters that are uh, tunable via PIO ports and our C code so that we can control things like the group size of the pixels that we're comparing. Okay. Um, and we, we output this to uh, nine different color channels um, because after that we got tired of writing gift cases. And uh, th this allows us to use nine different layers of depth. In the okay. Image. And actually, how about we do a proper demonstration of that? So this works better with a, a consistent background um, okay. and a, a consistent color for demonstration for horizontal. So then like you start yeah. off and So the, um, the first color here, um, if you go even further, it, uh, you can see some of the black. And then as we re retreat, you can see the color cycling through each of those sure. a different layer of depth. Yeah, and the reason that it's a solid color in the middle is because the way we did it was comparison by color, so then when it's all one solid color, then it just um, immediately... Okay, so it's sort of sensitive to edges? Yeah, it's like, no. Which, by the way, is how your eyes work also. It's just like color. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, we, um, no, so we, we wanted to implement sort of a, a rudimentary computer vision approach. Uh, this, we, we thought this was interesting because it really leveraged the power of the stereo cameras. We're using the, uh, the inherent offsets in the cameras. Um, which we actually, uh, this bracket allows us to tune the, the, tune the angles so we can uh, set up a proper focal distance that matches what you'd expect from your eyes. Uh, that's how we got this uh, image to be convincing, is by uh, staring at it while the other person's looking at the camera sure. until, until it's convincing. Um, but uh, we're really leveraging this raw data to, uh, to create this depth map. Um, so given more time, we'd, uh, there's different, different ways we could build on this to try to overcome some of these challenges. But uh, 
you know, given the limitations of the system, we're really happy with the, how it came out. It's really compelling, and looking through the glasses, it definitely... Um, Better. The glass is actually worked much better without this, yeah. Yeah, it is definitely, I'm looking at the glasses now, it's definitely showing depth. I don't know if yeah. maybe through the camera and glasses it'll work, I'm not sure. Really cool. And there, Bruce's hand is showing up on the depth map. Yeah, and then um, what, what we found really, really cool was just with the depth map, you know, the demonstration shows you, you know, precisely the, the, the different layers. But what I found striking is, as I walk through, and then as I back up, you can see the colors. It, it's, it's a little unclear because of the edges, but you get a real sense of the motion, the movement, and that I am a separate object yeah, standing apart from the background. And that was really the goal of this, was to, in a sense, identify close objects. I, identify near objects and far objects. Um, yeah. Which is precisely what the stereo camera allows us to do, this idea of depth. One challenge we really faced was the resolution is not great, so um, identifying small offsets is kind of hard, which is why there's so much noise. But sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these cameras are uh, sold for drones, correct? That, that's right. Okay. We um we, we chose to go for these to use these cameras because they're they're quite cheap um, for for their their quality. They're um they're designed for <clears throat> really for this idea of depth. You know, you want you want to they have a, a wide wide field of view. Um, they're they're you know, there's a they're very high res and they have good color color yeah. differentiation for this type of camera. Um, other cameras get much more washed out by the yeah. lighting. We're actually at a really bad lighting spot in the room, but the uh, the cameras do a pretty good job with this anyway. Yeah, the field of view is ama I, it's amazing <coughs> that Emmy's in the field of view. Yeah, and oh, this is cropped actually because of okay. the uh, uh, because of this guy here. The um uh, the the raw camera outputs uh, yeah. e even wider. Yeah. Very cool. Nice job. Awesome, thank you.